had the number of electrons for photons in your nucleus. This newly charged of atom, ion is its name. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the physical properties of metals and nonmetals and how those physical properties allow us to make useful things. We're going to do in this video, we're going to cover the next top one, which says analyze information from secondary sources to distinguish the physical properties of metals and nonmetals. So what we have to do in this top one is distinguish. Distinguish means we need to be able to tell the difference between metals and nonmetals in terms of physical properties. And if you look at these couple of pictures here, here we have metals. And before I start, I want to make sure, you, for example, brass. If you try to find brass on the periodic table, you wouldn't be able to because brass is actually an alloy. And we're going to cover alloy a lot more in the second module. Alloys are a combination of metals. So brass is not just one metal, it's two metals, two different ones. But these are all metals themselves. And what you can see here, if you compare the, let's say, appearance, you know, the, the general properties of the metals to the ones here on your right-hand side, you'd find that they look quite different. So these are most of these are our non-metals. And you have, for example, bromine here, which is liquid. You've got sulfur, which is obviously ashy looking. And most of our gases are also non-metals. For example, oxygen would be non-metal. We'll have nitrogen being non-metal. We would have chlorine gas. All of these are gas, gases. So either the most non-metals are a gas or they're these brittle looking solids or liquids and they look very different and they have very different properties to our metals. So what we have to do in this video is we have to talk about these different properties. So distinguish between these different properties of metals and non-metals. So here this all we have to look at is this table. Here we have our metals. Here we have our non-metals. And this is actually distinguishing. So this table helps us distinguish the different physical properties of metals compared to non-metals. So first for example, it says for metals, metals are generally solid. So most of them are solid. Whereas with the actual non-metals, we can find them as either solid, such as sulfur. We can find them as liquid, such as bromine, and quite a few as gas as well. So most are solid except for mercury for the actual metals, whereas we find all different three different states for non-metals. So I should put that as number one still. So that's the state of matter. Again, there was already a difference when it comes to states of matter. Second part was metals are heavy, with the exception of sodium, potassium, magnesium, whereas non-metals are generally quite light. So we ha have heavy, also high density for our metals, and light and low density for our non-metals. This refers to density. So high density for metals and low density for non-metals. Another difference is so metals are hard and non-brittle. So we've got hard, which means they're tough, but they're non-brittle. So if you look at the end of that picture here, you can see they look quite non-brittle. Whereas this, for example, looks like if you just touch a bit, it's going to break apart. Brittle refers to how easy it's going to break apart. So hard, but non-brittle. So we can put a lot of stress on these metals without them breaking, whereas, whereas non-metals would break quite easily. So hard, but non-brittle, whereas solids, uh, sorry, they are, so most of these are weaker, except for some of the solids might be, they might be solid, but they're still weaker. But they are also brittle, so that's an important difference which means put a little bit of pressure on them and they break. With, when it comes to the next property, so they're good conductors of electricity and heat. This is for the metals. So good heat plus electrical conductivity. And the difference between this for the metals and non-metals, non-metals are weak or poor, they're poor heat plus electrical connect have a poor heat and electrical connectivity. So for example, we don't use rubber, which is a non-metal, to carry electricity. We use it to insulate. So it does the opposite insulation is the opposite to connectivity. So non-metals are good insulators, whereas metals are good conductors. So next is they are ductile and Malleable. That's for metals. So ductile means we can make it into wire, 
and malleable means we can make it into sheets. So they're very ductile, so we, that means make into wires, and very malleable, that means we can make it into sheets. Whereas nonmetals are poor, are non, well, I'll just say non ductile and malleable. That means we can't put them into either wires or sheets very, very well. And that makes sense because I said earlier they're brittle, so you try to make them into sheets to just break. Whereas we can do that for the actual metals. It also says they have high melting points and boiling points. This is for metals. High melting points and boiling points. And that makes sense because they're all really solid. And you just imagine if you tried to melt iron, you can do that. But you're going to have to have very much energy to that. So you need to have lots of energy to actually melt them. And even more energy to make them into gas. Whereas obviously when it comes to non-metals, these have a lower have quite low melting point and boiling point. I mean, stuff like oxygen, for example, these are non-metals and they're already gas even before we put any energy into them. So they have, at the time, the melting and boiling point is really low compared to metals. Now they generally produce, okay, the next part is just random. They generally produce ringing sounds on collision and they do not produce ringing sounds on collision from non-metals. I mean, you won't have to remember this. It's not a really important one. But the other ones are quite. And then the last one is they generally are lustrous and can be polished. So they have that lustrous, shiny appearance for metals and the non-shiny for your non-metals. So these are your most important differences. And if you look at these differences again and you look at the actual parts, we said these are hard but non-brittle. So if you try to break these, it'd be quite hard, whereas your non-metals are brittle, and that makes sense because they already come as powder. These are shiny which you can see from the picture, whereas these are non-shiny. Your metals have a high boiling point and, or, and melting point, which means you have to put lots of energy for melt to melt them. And again, most of many of your non-metals are actually gas, so they have a very, very low boiling point compared to your metals. We also said that they're malleable, so we can make them into sheets, which makes sense, because they're non-brittle, whereas we can't do that for non-metals. They're also ductile, we can make them into wires, we can't do that for non-metals. They can also conduct electricity well and heat well, your metals but your non-metals can't. And that was quite a few of the most important ones. Density as well, they're a lot heavier. You can see they look really heavy, these metals. It's a lot heavier than your non-metals are. But these are some of the most important ones. Yeah, hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.